Hi, um, I'm a writer and a content strategist, and one thing that people talk to me whenever I say that I'm a writer is that they love to share their pet peeves. It's like, I don't like people who say like, I don't like people who use quotes for emphasis, I don't like people who use whom instead of who or vice versa. My big pet peeve is grammar Nazis because I think grammar Nazis are a menace to good communication and need to be resisted. Now, I don't normally talk a lot about grammar Nazis, not a term I use a lot, but unless you have, of course, uh, invaded your own uh, grammar Sudetenland, but it's a common term, people use it a lot. It's good, and it also has a lot of stuff out there for grammar Nazis that aren't up there for grammar snobs. Now, the thing about grammar Nazis is they like to enforce a lot of rules. They think breaking the rules makes your mother tongue cry. And I think language is much more fun than that. And they're often wrong. One of the big things that grammar Nazis are wrong about is that you're somehow saving English if you are correcting people's grammar. English is fine. English has been around for centuries. English has a half billion speakers, like, or up to two billion. It's not going anywhere. And a lot of the things that grammar Nazis focus on, they're as interested in grammar as they are in Nazism, which is say not at all. Most of the things they fixate on are issues of style or punctuation or usage or stuff like that. Grammar is deep. Grammar is so entrenched that when the French conquered England and sat there for generations, they didn't change the grammar. They had a whole bunch of vocabulary. Grammar is DNA, style is like a haircut. Uh, now, I'm sure all of you had very, very good teachers who taught you to do things like read uh, Brave New World or memorize what happened in 1066, but they also pass on an awful lot of pet peeves and pretend that they're actual rules of grammar and that you need to do them to do stuff. Whatever you picked up in school from your teachers, whatever you picked up at home from your parents, whatever you learned from Saturday morning cartoons, it probably serves you fine most of the time. But they're not real grammar rules. They're, they're rules of style. They may even be linguistic urban legends, but you bought the rule. You said, well, that sounds good to me. Somebody told me I cannot do that. I'll do that. Singular they. I can't use they as a singular. You don't research it. You don't go, well, Chaucer did it, and C.S. Lewis did it, and Shakespeare did it, so it must be fine. No, you just bought the rule and you take it home. So you're really operating with a certain amount of incomplete information. And as we learned from Rachel the Stark, when you pass along incomplete information, you end up digging in the wrong place and spending a lot of effort doing stuff that you really don't need to do. I did not use a picture of him melting, by the way. Now, this one is a thing. When grammar Nazis are wrong, they're rude. Even when grammar Nazis are being right, they are rude. It is rude to correct people. It is rude to interrupt people and tell them that they're doing wrong. Miss Manners says, uh, I believe it is that, uh, <laughs> uh, you should be focused more on the content of what people are saying than how that they're saying it. That is polite. Uh, good grammar, even if it's real or pretend, does not trump good manners. Now, Anybody can follow rules. Following the rules, of course, good writers break rules all the time. And that's because good writers know that it's better to make something sound good and make something work well than to follow some arbitrary rule book for what's going on. And the thing is, a lot of rules, they aren't even real rules. They get made up and people pass them along for generations. There's a new one going around that how verbing nouns is weird. And if somebody tells you you should not verb a noun, you should question them. Don't ask them a question. Question them, because the word question, the noun, is like 200 years older than to question. Why is that? Because somebody verbed it, and it's stuck. Writing is not Mad Libs. You don't get to pick things and fill in the blanks, and you're David Foster Wallace, and it's awesome if you follow all the rules. No, it's hard. And that's the thing. That's the big thing that grammar Nazis love to say. It's easy. Well, if you spell it's with an apostrophe when you should not have used an apostrophe, well, here's a flow chart that you can use to figure out when you use apostrophes. If you need a flow chart, it's not easy. It's not an easy rule to remember. You need to talk to people who are editors. Editors are people who are actually good at making things look better. Otherwise, you're just like doing the verbal equivalent of Photoshop. It's easy to get started and to tweak a couple of things, but you go too far. It's also easy to leave things looking weird and unnatural and wrong. This is a manuscript page from George Orwell's 1984. George Orwell, one of the masters of English prose. This is what an editor did to his prose, and that editor made it better. And they did not just sit there and go through there and go, you needed to use whom there. That's not what you do. When it counts, use an editor. When it doesn't count, ignore it. But when it counts, get an editor to help you out. They will make your prose better. They will think about how to express your ideas more clearly than you could ever guess. But a grammar not just going to nitpick. Don't settle for that. Go for the good stuff. Someone like me. Someone like many people out there. Thank you. Uh, follow me on Twitter. That's the end. Have a good night.